Hello and welcome to the first of what will be many SAM Labs webinars. Um, today we're going to be giving you a great introduction into SAM Labs, getting started showing you some of the basics, let you know about our exciting new kits, some of the ones that you can see behind us, um, and getting a bit hands on showing you some great initial projects that you can do uh, and also a little bit of inspiration on how you can take SAM Labs further. My name is Morton. I am the VP of Sales here at SAM Labs and I'm streaming live from the SAM Labs headquarters in East London. It's been a very snowy day. I don't know if you can see it outside. Uh, so it's nice to be inside and warm. Um, I'm going to warm up with a bit of fun coding as well today. So for those of you who are online and don't know, SAM Labs is a London-based edtech company, and our mission is to inspire every kid to discover the, phone, uh, the fun in coding and creating. And we do that by providing the most engaging STEAM solutions that are made up of great content, amazing lesson plans, teacher guides, everything that you need to bring alive coding and STEM in the classroom, engaging and intuitive software, that allows you to understand the fundamentals of programming in an intuitive, simple, and engaging way, and hardware that brings it alive. It takes it out of the screen and into your hands, and allows you not only to discover a digital ecosystem, but also allows you to explore the world around you. So kids are playing with these products, they're learning, they're engaging with uh, the computer, the technology, but also with the environment around them. Samlabs was founded in 2014 uh, by Joey Kim Horn, who, with an engineering degree, had a great understanding of these technical subjects. But he was always frustrated by not being able to easily share that information with others. So while he had all the knowledge, people with great ideas, designers, children, artists, were never able to realize those ideas in the same way that he could, thanks to his technical understanding. And so when he finished his master's degree and he was in Tokyo doing his PhD, um, he had a lot of time on his hands. He didn't know anyone, he didn't speak Japanese. And so he started thinking about how he could take this knowledge that he gained in engineering school and share that with others. And he came up with this idea of making SAM Labs uh, by looking into the fundamental pieces of engineering and computer science and distilling that into pieces that you can then piece back together. And this process, he said he wanted to make as easy as Lego. And that's where the idea of these blocks came about. And his mission was to make it easy enough so that even his brother Sam could do it. Uh, and hence why we're called Sam Labs today. And of course, from that initial starting point of having this fantastic idea, we've come a long way. Um, we built on this idea and really kind of explored how we can continue to drive this understanding and do that in a really fun and engaging way, not just for the children, but also for teachers and for anyone else who wants to get involved. And um, through this process, we started off with a very basic concept of the hardware and software. And we've distilled that into great offerings that are supported by curriculum aligned content. Um, and that comes in different kits that are available then to purchase either through ourselves on our website or through uh, our partners locally within uh, our different markets around the world. So uh, the beginning of this year, we launched three new kits at the BET show in London, uh, which are the Alpha, the Team, and the Classroom Kit. You can see the Alpha Kit behind me on my right. Uh, the Classroom Kit is on the left. But the one that we are going to be using today and be running through is the Team Kit. Um, the Team Kit comes in this fantastic stackable tray from uh, Gratnels, a great partner of ours, which means that it's not only durable and handy, it can also fit straight into the infrastructure in your classroom. The concept of these three new kits is having a scalable approach that allows multiple students or multiple groups of students to be working at the same time doing the same activities. And having that as a great starting point to get involved in STEM and really start understanding uh, the basics of programming. So I'm gonna be doing a uh, unboxing here for you today um, with the team kit. And the team kit contains uh, 15 blocks. It contains 36 accessories, uh, 35 plus software blocks. And the reason why we put plus there is that this is something that's constantly evolving and growing. And that's a great benefit of having the digital side of the product. Uh, we've got over 25 lesson plans as well that you can do using the blocks in the kit um, and different applications that run across all different platforms. So regardless of what device you're using to be uh, getting started with Sam Labs, you're able to then uh, use different engaging uh, and intuitive apps. So the team kit is made up of these four different trays that you can see here in, in front of me. We've got three of the same tray, uh, which is this tray here. And then we've got a fourth tray, which contains a few extra bits. Uh, these individual trays here are actually our alpha kit. Now, 
The Alpha Kit's been designed to be used by groups of three students at a time. It contains four Samlabs blocks, as well as all the accessories you need uh, to start using those blocks in different contexts. So these blocks are a uh, RGB LED, so it's a red, green, and blue LED, a light sensor, and two DC motors. So that's the Sam Labs hardware that you're getting, the Sam blocks, as we call them. Each one of these blocks comes with a Lego connector. So very nicely and easily, you can attach or detach this great Lego connector here. Uh, and because the Sam blocks have these great um, rubberized sleeves, they just squeeze in there, you don't need to fasten, clip them in. It means that you're not getting that wear and tear that you would have if you're constantly attaching, snapping, and detaching something. So it's really good in terms of classroom, uh, getting that use out of these blocks, they're hardy and durable. Along with the blocks, as I mentioned, we always have the, it was also have these accessories. We have another piece here, which uh, allows you to connect to Lego, which is the gear wheel. Uh, and this attached to the motor on one side, which is a standard three millimeter shaft and then connects to Lego Technics on the other side. So really handy piece to build those more mechanical and moving projects. And lastly, we have all of the great components to build our Sam Curious cars, which is made up of a car chassis. And here you would squeeze in the two motors. Of course, you've got the wheels for the motors as well. And then a controller where you can put the blocks in that end up controlling that car as well. So as you can see from this little clever tray, that Alpha Kit, uh, you can start building some awesome projects with everything you need in the kit. So as I said, the, the team kit contains three of these sets, which means you can have three groups of students, up to 10 students, using uh, the kit at the same time. And in addition to having three times the alpha kit, the team kit also has an, um, an additional three blocks in the kit. So that's a button, a buzzer, and a proximity sensor. And that means that if a particular group of the students want to try something a bit different, if they want to start getting a bit more creative, there's a bit more variety in that kit as well. Now, each one of these, uh, blocks is charged with a micro USB. So all the Samlabs blocks are wireless. They've got a Bluetooth sender receiver uh, and they're rechargeable, which means that you don't need to worry about changing uh, batteries. You don't need to worry about replacing that at all. All you need to do is simply plug in the blocks. Uh, and we have these fantastic, um, kind of call them squid chargers because they look a bit like a squid. Um, these fantastic chargers, which allow you to charge up to five blocks at the same time. And they charge from a standard five volt USB uh, port which means that you don't need to worry about putting the blocks away somewhere else in the classroom, disrupting that learning experience for the students. You simply plug them in uh, with a micro USB and you can plug that straight into the, your computer or any other uh, five volt USB um, plug, which means that you can get, continue on using the blocks, continue on working and learning while the blocks are charging. So you get a great continuity there as well. Um, and this is part of our commitment to creating a great classroom experience. And this continues all the way through to the end of the lesson as well, where as a teacher, you can easily see whether all the blocks have been put back in the kit. So instead of just having them dumped into a giant tray or different drawers, you can easily see for each of the groups, do I have my sand blocks in the tray? Yes, great, everything is back in place. Um, and the students haven't accidentally brought any of the blocks with them in their pocket. Now, of course, I talked about sand labs being made up of three parts, great content, software and hardware. And we started off actually with the last one there with the hardware and showing how that comes in the team kit. Now I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna show you the software piece. Um, and lastly then at the end of the session, I'm gonna show you some of that content that we're doing to, to bring this alive. But uh, the software is available, as I mentioned, across all different devices. Today I'm using a MacBook, but you can just as easily be using any other device. And uh, the app that we're gonna be using today is called the Sam Space app and that's available to download from our Getting Started section of the Sam Labs website. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna share my screen here with you. And I'm gonna jump into the Sam Space software. So to get started, I'm just gonna be turning on my blocks and I'm gonna do a little hack here to show you me. There I am, hello. And uh, I've paired my blocks in advance, uh, but you can just as easily pair them within the application itself. It's a very straightforward, simple process pairing with Bluetooth. Uh, and this is something that we really focus on making sure that it's quick and easy to set up. So as a teacher, you're not wasting that time trying to figure out how everything should connect and pair. And you see that within a few seconds, I was able to pair all my four, uh, four blocks and get them ready within the application itself. So I'm just gonna enter full screen here and just remove, um, move myself over a little bit. Um, so the Sam Space app is actually made up of three different sections. We've got our 
toolbox here on the left where we can see the active blocks that I've paired, the physical blocks in the My Block section. And we've got a range of different software features below, which I'll go into in a bit. Uh, in the middle here, we have the white canvas section. This is where we're going to be doing our programming today. And on the right, we've got our menu where you can see previous projects have been built, as well as tips and advice, and also a great panel to get in touch with Samlabs directly if you have any questions. So the first thing I'm going to do is build a very simple project using our light sensor and our light. And to get started, all I need to do is drag those onto my canvas here. And as I do that, you can see that the light on the side changed color. So for a block that's paired and ready to go, it's white. Nice light, bright light there, showing you that it's on and it's connected. And then as soon as I drag them on, they change color. And you might notice a little number on the screen there next to the light sensor. Uh, and this number is hovering around 86 at the moment. And this is giving me a real-time feedback of the light levels that the light sensor is detecting. Now, if I take this light sensor and I cover this with my hand, you see that the reading goes to zero. Because at the moment, there's no light that hits the surface of the light sensor. So from the get-go, you have this really intuitive and engaging way of interacting with the hardware. You get that feedback on the screen, something's happening immediately. And this really draws the students in, and it uh, triggers that curiosity of, OK, well, how can I interact with this? What happens if I put this light sensor underneath my computer? OK, it's quite dark there. It's not quite zero, but it's in the shade. And so already, you're not only exploring the logic of what's going on on the screen, you're also exploring the room around you. And you can see as you hold it up to different areas, you get different numbers. But of course, Samlabs is not just about getting a number on a screen uh, from the light sensor. It's about building uh, different kinds of projects, employing logic, and really using that understanding of programming and building it up from first principles. One of the really important aspects of Samlabs is uh, computational thinking, really understanding the world around us in a structured way. Now, this is a really crucial skill, not only to go and do programming, but also to um, start understanding the world around us in different ways as well. And computational thinking is made up of a few different elements. One important one is decomposition, looking at a complex uh, problem or situation and breaking that into smaller pieces, much like how Joachim broke down engineering and computer science into small building blocks. It's about abstraction, so taking what's in front of us and relating that to something else, which is a key, key part of programming. Now, if you kind of imagine traditional programming of all these uh, letters and everything uh, going on a screen like matrix, that's a very high level of abstraction. We really brought that level down and made it much easier for anyone to get involved in Sound Labs. Uh, it's also about understanding patterns and recognizing when things are repeating. Again, a very key principle of programming. And of course, understanding algorithms. And today, when we're going to be doing our programming, we're actually starting to build very simple algorithms as well, using that logic. So going back to my blocks here, I've got my light sensor, my light. And uh, to get started, all I need to do is take the signal, this variable from the light sensor, connect this to the light. And to do that, I don't need to fasten them together. I don't need to put any wires between them. don't need to put them on a breadboard. Uh, I don't even need to write any code. All I have to do is simply connect the blocks. Now you can see that my LED here is shining. And if I cover that light sensor again, the light turns off. So the brightness level hitting the light sensor is sending that signal to the light, and the light is responding. Again, that's happening in real time. You don't need to tell it to do that. All you need to do is just connect the two blocks, and right away you have a result. And for a student who's never done any programming before, who's never really engaged with technology in this way, this is an eye-opener. And it shows them that, actually, you know what? I can get started as well. I forgot to mention in the beginning that Sam Labs is targeted at the youngest age group, uh, which is really 6 to 11-year-olds, year because we believe that the earlier you can get, in, uh, get them involved and engaged in STEAM and programming, the bigger impact we can have. And as you can see, the level of abstraction needed for this and that direct engagement you have really makes it accessible and also makes it fun for those, that youngest age group there to get started. But of course, Sam Labs, again, is not just about connecting one piece of hardware to another piece of hardware. As I said, it's about building programs, it's about building projects. And for that, we need to start using some of the software blocks. Um, and on the left side here, you can see that there's a full range of over 35 different software blocks that we can use just as easily as we can use the hardware in this really simple drag and drop way. So I could say, you know what, actually, I want to add a logic that only if the light drops below a certain amount does it turn on and off. So I want to basically set a threshold on this, or I want to set a condition that says, I'm going to compare the number coming in to a certain value, and I'm going to have something happen on the light. So very simple logic, but very powerful logic. And how I'm going to do that is to go down to my section here called Numbers. I'm going to grab the compare block. All I need to do is simply drop it in between the two. 
And then I can easily double click on the compare block and it pulls up this contextual menu that allows me to set a particular condition. And I can say, I only want the light to turn on if it's less than 60. I could easily change this number to anything I want. So actually I'm gonna say less than 50 as a number. Now, if I go back to my camera there, hi. Um, as you can see, as soon as the light sensor goes below a certain amount, when I cover it, it drops up, it turns on. And so we've now actually set a condition, again, a very important principle of computer, computer science, and we've done that in a very simple and engaging way. Hopefully you can see the light turning on there uh, when this happens. Um, and you can see that the light no longer is showing a gradient, it's just going true or false whenever that condition is true. And like I can open up that contextual menu on the compare block, I can also open up a contextual menu straight on the light. And for that, all I need to do is simply double click. And here you can see, again, I get a little color wheel. So I don't need to write in any kind of RGB code, which for a, say, an eight-year-old could be quite confusing. All I need to do is select a color. In this case, I'm going to select red and press OK. And now when the light turns off, we get a red light. So you can see how easy it is to start actually exploring and playing around and customizing the logic and ultimately the program that we have as well. And this means that the students are not frustrated by not being able to do things. They're actually encouraged to keep going forwards and saying, you know what, actually, I want to build something and I want to keep pushing myself and going further. And so obviously with this very simple setup, I can actually start building on this. Now, the next thing that I might do, which is really fun, is to add in my motors. So I'm just adding my wheels to my hardware here. And the great thing is that while the logic is happening on the screen, the building and construction is happening in your hands. So you get a really nice, tangible way of learning as well. And that means for students that learn uh, in different ways, so those who learn tactically, those who learn visually, those who learn through different means, all have a way of engaging with SAM Labs. It really becomes this inclusive first step into programming and into STEM. And if I go back into my application here, I'm gonna scroll up to my menu, and all I'm gonna do is just drag on my, my two motors, and as you can see, they change different colors. One is pink and one is blue. And if I want those to connect to the project, all I have to do is connect the dots. So you can see I can easily include those as well. And as I do that, they turn green. And then as soon as I cover the light sensor and it goes below 50, the motors turn on as well. And you can also, you can't see it down here, but the light itself is also turning on. So all of these inputs are now connected in that same way. So I can take my motors here, um, and then while it's fun to have them spinning around, I'm actually going to use my car chassis to build a little car that spins around. So again, take my blocks. All I have to do is squeeze them into the chassis, and they're in there. Again, they just squeeze in, they grab that really nicely. So for someone constructing something quickly and easily, um, it's a great tool. I've got a little roller ball here in the front that comes with a kit. And um, hopefully you'll be able to see here in front of me. I'm just going to tilt the camera down on my desk. You can see that when I cover the light sensor, the car starts spinning around. And this is always a really fun moment for the students when it starts spinning around, it starts hitting things, and you really get that engagement. You see something happening in your hands, uh, and that's really fun. And so with that car spinning around, I can then also say, I want to add in my light, and you really kind of have this fun project that's come alive in a matter of minutes. Now imagine if you start actually then building on that same principle, you can start doing much more complex things. So the next thing you might want to do is add in a different kind of logic statement. So if I continue going down my menu here, going past the numbers, this is where we found the compare, I can go into my timing controls that allows me to do something for a certain amount of time, set up a sequence. I say, first, I want the car to do this, and then a few seconds later, something else. Or potentially, I can use an interval to send a repeating message, uh, which can be really handy to build projects like a traffic light. I can go down further. And I'm actually going to use one of these blocks here from the, the logic statement, um, you know, from the logic section. For those of you familiar with Boolean logic, this can normally be a very dry subject to teach students. And what Sam Labs allows you to do is make that tangible and fun. And again, this is a really core principle of computer science and programming, is how do you control different kind of inputs and outputs? You set conditions in place, you can compare numbers, you can also add logic saying, if this and this is happening, then something else. So I'm going to grab an AND statement here, and I'm going to say only if the, all the conditions that are going into the AND statement are true, is the value going to be true uh, sent down the other side. So I'm connecting my AND statement to all my inputs here. And at the moment, I only have this comparison block that's going in. But I'm going to add a space bar here as well. 
And essentially what this is saying is that if I want the car to spin around or the light to turn on, the light sensor needs to be less than 50 and the space bar needs to be pressed down and sending it true. So if I cover my light sensor, nothing happens. But if I do that, as well as pressing the space bar, you can see then that the light is shining and the wheels are spinning. And so you can really start making these concepts, these really fundamental principles within computer science, engaging, fun, and tangible for the students to learn. Uh, and we've had teachers bringing these concepts into math class, we've had teachers bringing this into physics class, really kind of highlighting and, and engaging students in a different way. And you can keep on building on this, it's pretty much limitless in terms of the things that you can build using Sam Labs. I'm gonna jump into, quickly show you a, a, one of my favorite projects that I, I show every time I'm talking about Sam Labs which is um, a ball sorting machine. So this machine uh, is one of the many, many videos that we have on our YouTube page. Uh, and this is actually using the blocks from the alpha kit. So you've got a few motors moving around. Uh, you've got the light sensor and then you've got the light. And what this machine is doing is moving white and blue balls around a circuit. And you can see this is all built using uh, Lego Technics. And if the light level reflected off the ball is above a certain amount, it must be a white ball because white reflects more light than blue. Again, a nice little physics lesson there. And then that motor is just shifting the ball one way or the other way. And the logic behind this is done in the exact same way as the programming I was just doing within the Sound Space app. If the light sensor detects more than 85, hold for one second the motor. And below here, you have a slightly more advanced uh, concept. But again, you can explain each of these icons individually. And this is what's powering the whole machine itself. So with a few simple icons and a few different pieces of hardware, you can build this amazing contraption that moves around. And I would really encourage you to go onto the Sam Labs YouTube page and check out all these amazing projects you can build. Um, another really amazing one that comes up next is a, a working coffee machine. So definitely recommend checking that out as well. But again, it's all done in this really simple, intuitive way. Now, for students who want to go further, we haven't limited the experience. So you might say, OK, great, this is fantastic for uh, first graders or for people who have never done any programming before. But what about those kids who have done that experience, who really want to get step into something more advanced? Well, Sam Labs really allows up for that progression. So within the Sam Space app on your computer, you can actually go further and you can jump in and do JavaScript. So you can actually go in to do script-based coding within this environment as well. We also have new platforms coming out that are uh, Chrome-based as well. So there'll be some very exciting uh, news about uh, the uh, Blockly-based interface that's coming out um, on Chrome browser within the next few months. So stay tuned for that. That, again, is great for older students or students who've already done some sort of programming. So we really cater to those students. And for those that have built more advanced physical projects, the SAM Labs um, hardware, the SAM blocks, is also great to integrate with other maker tools like 3D printers. Now. While we provide these great sets straight out of the kit, this could just as easily be 3D printed. And last week, I actually 3D printed a glow-in-the-dark version of one of these chassis. And again, because the blocks are wireless, because they're compact, and because they're all the same size, you can easily 3D print something that has a space for the blocks and push them in, whether that's a car chassis or whether that is a controller, where again, the blocks really easily integrate. And Sam Labs is, that, is not just about being used on its own. It really becomes this interactive tool that adds value to your devices, to other maker tools, uh, to Lego, and anything else you might have around that you want to bring alive and add that element of logic and learning into. So it really kind of becomes this well-rounded, fantastic, engaging way. So um, the last piece of the Sam Labs uh, ecosystem of these three different pillars that we have is the content. So I'm just going to jump back into my hangout. Uh, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen to show you this last piece. So there I am again. Uh, and the last one that we have is um, the content, which is primarily made of these lesson plans. We also have a fantastic teacher's guide, which um, you can find on the website. All this content is free and available on the website, by the way. So do go and check this out. Um, it's under the teaching materials section of samlabs.com. Uh, some of these lesson plans, uh, we just printed them out here. Uh, there's two different versions of the lesson plans, one for teacher and one for the student. The teacher one provides great questions, prompts, all the details that you need as a teacher, while the student lesson plan is much more about them kind of documenting and going through that experience and, and uh, learning what they're doing. And these lesson plans really illustrate the variety of possibilities within Sam Labs. And when we talk about what we do uh, and the engaging STEAM solution that we have, 
we genuinely mean that we cover all different aspects of STEAM, starting with science, going through technology, engineering, the arts, a really important one to allow students to be creative and find that context in which they want to be learning, and all the way through to the M as well. So we cover that full STEAM range, and this is reflected through our lesson plans. Uh, this first one that I hit here about civic engagement, this of course relates to uh, computer science, but it also relates to design technology and even citizenship as well. So it covers really broad subject areas. And because of the ease of use and simplicity of Sam Labs, you can bring it into any kind of class and it allows you to bring these subjects alive in a really simple and easy way. Um, I'm going to talk you through one of the other lesson plans here, which is the two seconds. Apologies for this. Lesson plan about photosynthesis. So um, this lesson plan here on photosynthesis uh, covers biology and computer science. And I was just informed that there is a question for me in the chat. So let me see if I can see this. Uh, I need to find exactly where uh, to see the chat. Unfortunately, I'm not able to see the chat right here. Uh, so I'll answer that shortly. Uh, I'm just going to continue to go through and show you the photosynthesis lesson plan. Now, photosynthesis is a subject area that is taught around the world, whether that's in the UK, the US, Australia, wherever you might be, the photosynthesis is a core subject area. And what we're able to do then with SAMAMS is not only run an experiment, but actually design and build that experimentation as well. So you can um, figure out what is the problem we're trying to solve? What is that insight we're trying to get? What's the logic that we need to employ? And then use SAM Labs and programming as a means to get there. Um, now, the lesson plans always start with key information, so everything you need to know about uh, the subject areas, the recommended prior knowledge, the time required, so that as a teacher, you can easily get started uh, straight into the class. Now, of course, you can take these as a starting point and design your lesson plans, but we really want to give you the support that you need to get started right away. Uh, it also talks about the curriculum alignment. This particular project aligns to computing in Key Stage 2 and uh, biology in Key Stage 3. So those are different year groups or ages within the UK schooling system. And then it goes into uh, a first page on summary. So I'm not going to go through every single page of this in detail, but I wanted to show the kind of diagrams that we provide and the kind of prompts and the, the inspiration that you might need as a teacher. And we basically split the interactions into inputs, outputs, and connections in between. Now, if you think back to the example that I built with the light sensor, the light sensor and the spacebar were my inputs, and the motors and the lights were my outputs. And the logic that we employed in the middle were the connections. So really easily, we can kind of divide into these simple things. That means that it's accessible, it's digestible, and it's understandable for the students as well as for you as teachers. Now, uh, along with this, we also have these small prompts, these little call-outs that help you understand why we're doing these connections. What is this actually doing? What is this teaching? So if I look here at the light sensor to the counter, the counter would be used to keep track of the number of bubbles produced. So in this case, you would actually be tracking and counting the number of bubbles, um, and that goes straight into the counter here. So the function and the purpose of all these different blocks is explained very easily and accessibly in these lesson plans. Now, these different lesson plans um, are, um, yeah, as I mentioned, they cover all different subject areas, and they're available for free on the website. Um, and I want to go back into the question around um, the progression, around um, where you start off with a simple visual flow-based programming and going all the way into JavaScript, uh, which was one of the questions that we had in the live chat. So the SAM Space app and the flow-based programming, as you've seen, is very visual and intuitive. And this allows you to explore and actually understand those fundamental principles and the logic that you need to get started in technology. So for anyone who's scared away by script-based programming or wires, et cetera, this is that great first entry point. Um, the next stage you might want to go to is the block-based approach. Now, a block-based approach is um, virtually universally used around the world uh, in middle schools and upwards. So pretty much from grade five, year four, um, around that age of 11 years old, 10, 11 years old and upwards, students are being expected to do block-based programming. It requires a slightly higher level of abstraction. And what we've done at Sam Labs is actually add that element of physicality into block-based programming. This is going to be coming live in April, and we have a browser-based approach for this. So it's going to be available in the Chrome browser. Um, and what you can do then is actually use the, the basic principles of Blockly, add the Sam Labs blocks in, and then you have a physical project that's uh, built within Blockly. And this um, interface will also be able to flip directly into JavaScript. So for the students who really want to push themselves and go further, they have that opportunity of going between Blockly and JavaScript as well. Um, and the kits are absolutely, so the other question that we got now was whether you can use the kits with multiple logins. 
Uh, as our software is completely free and open, uh, we don't have any limitations on users or um, locking in anyone. So if you get a team kit for 10 students, that's 10 students at a time that's using it. You can just easily take the same kit and you can unpair the blocks from that account and you can use it with another one. The blocks remain paired to an account as you are programming, but as soon as you end that session, they become freely available for anyone else to use. And another important point is that you can actually use the application on its own without having the hardware in front of you because you can simulate what those experiences are and that allows students to work offline, do homework and come into class and they can pair the blocks. So there are really no limitations on who's using the blocks at any one point in time. Um, so the last thing I'd like to do is to quickly jump to our website and show you the samlabs.com resource. So this is our fantastic new website. Um, really excited about our branding that we launched at the beginning of this year. It really brings things alive. There's great resources on this website. Uh, and I just realized I need to share my screen with you. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to see it. So I'm going to share my screen quickly. And uh, just jumping here into samlabs.com, as you can see, there's some basic information about what Samlabs is, which is great if you want to be sharing this information further. There's a getting started section where you can download the applications. And there's a great section on uh, teaching materials as well, uh, which gives you all the lesson plan, teacher guides, everything that you need to get started uh, and bring Samlabs alive in your classroom. Uh, and of course, if there's any support that you're looking for as well, we're always available. Our team is fantastically engaged. And if you want to um, get a bit more details from us, if you want to dive straight in and see Samlabs in action for yourself, we highly recommend you to click on Get a Demo, sign up today, and one of the wonderful Samlabs teams will connect with you to show you how Samlabs uh, can be right for you in terms of bringing live programming and bringing live Steam in your classroom today. Uh, I think we're out of time, just about. So thank you very much for this inaugural uh, webinar. We really look forward to doing uh, many more of these in the future. And if you have any other questions, feel free to get in touch with uh, any other SamLabs team, as I mentioned, through the website. Also, send, You can also send an email to myself at morton at samlabs.com or to info at samlabs.com if you're wondering about anything else. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world.